Hello. Hello. <laughs> we finally get to meet. Yeah, we finally get to meet. I'm so happy and excited. Oh, really? Well, that's yeah. good. So, how do we start this out? Do you want me to do a bit of an interview of you or? Uh... Interviews. Oh, how intriguing. Um, I, I have zip agenda. I just wanted to be in your presence and uh, just connect and, um, you know, answer questions, ask questions. I don't know. Just start. If you have an opening statement, proceed. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go straight to the... Um... Well, I'll give a bit of context, I guess, because I was talking to Greg and uh, we were, our visions were starting to come together. And at about a time when I've been working on uh, one of the software sort of parts of the Inflow Matrix software program, which is part of the New Paradigm Toolkit, which is the main containers for my work. And I have an Oracle tool that creates a conversation, a value and a conceptual lens to use to answer a question. And so I have offline card sets and then we built this, uh, me and Noah built uh, an online uh, Oracle generator. And so one thing Greg had said is when we speak that, you, that we would use this uh, tool and to give you a starting point and part of the maybe entering into the game might at some point be everyone gets this starting point, a starting question and a starting spell. And so that's a bit of the context as to how you came into that team or you were sort of like a little bit of outside interest when I had sent the message out to sort of people I had known because it was more related to finding a team to, to bring my work into the world kind of thing. Yeah. And then link into what Greg was doing because within Greg's game, he's been offering me to make the first move. And since I yeah. have this sort of, a, I have like this, a whole plan to transform the world's economic system from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. So that's what yeah. I'm working on, Captain Sweep, and that's the very secret plan. And so maybe if I just share my screen and go to that, that might be a good starting point. I just want to pull something up as well that corresponds to what you're saying. Um, what the he, she, it, and the new are, you know, our paradigms converge mm. and for me uh, you notice so far I don't press anything you know because uh, I trust the organic unfolding of the forces that are coming forward we know that we're not the only people thinking into the future that we want and it's beautiful how you know the the phalanxes are coming together you know mm. so I didn't want to push anything um, and so I'm so excited that you, your brain, the way that you do things, you've figured out the plan. And of course, there's incredible alignment here. So all I did was I just pulled up something that we have in the he, she, it paradigm of communication, which is called rules of engagement. So, but, but you go first and then I'll add that on. And Okay. Uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Me. So can you see the screen? Uh yeah. It's a little bit off on my end. I don't know if it is on yours, but there's business questions, intimate yeah. questions, family questions, social questions, friendship questions, and service questions. So what question would you like to choose from? What category? Oh, that's beautiful. So do you want me to ask you a question? Or well, no, do you you, all, all you have to do is choose one of these categories and then it's gonna generate a question and then a spell, which is creates a remedy. Oh, cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, I will play your game, Elijah. Um, uh, let's do friendship question, because I, I, I just think that's a good place to start anything. Okay, this is, what should I teach my friends? <laughs> okay. So do you want me to read or do what, yeah, what do you want to you, do? You read that and then okay. answer the question using those words answer the question using these words. Wow. Okay. Resilience. 
definition to value the ability to flow with adversary, uh, adversity, capacity to self-organize and the ability for cont continuous learning, value lens. Intention, uh, three and four operations conversation, follow-up. When an agreement has been made, a follow-up occurs to make sure it occurs. Communication, function, the subsystem that facilitates the flow of information through the system's network, synergy lens. Okay, so you want me to answer the question, what should I teach my friends? Yes. Using the words resilience, follow-up, and communication, is that correct? Yes. Mm. Okay. And the center word, the follow-up is like a type of conversation. There are 72 of them and they're divided into sort of nine functions in a business. And so this is the operational kind of a daily activities and looking at follow-up, that's the conversation. Then you're programming that with intention at the top with resilience. And then you're looking through the lens of communication. And towards what end is this towards the end of knowing question. each other? What? To answer the question, what should I teach my friends? Okay. Okay. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. What should I teach my friends? I'm still a little confused, by the way. Okay. Um, well, this is very new. This is a totally different way of, of creating a divination. You want me to communicate under certain controls, which of course I'm not used to because, ah. you know, um, and, and you want me to use the words you've given me. And so I guess you're already saying that you know what I should teach my friends. I should teach my friends resilience. No, I don't know. It's divination. Oh. I'm not, I didn't choose these cards. I just choose the methodology. Okay. All right. Well, I'm a little confused, but I'm game to give it a shot. Okay. Um, so I'm answering the question, what should I teach my friends using these three words or just the first yeah. word? Or you can, you, can, all, you can use it. It's, it's more of a stimulant to see if it gives you a different perspective or points you in a direction that comes to you. Okay. Can I just answer the question? What yeah. should I teach my friends? And yeah. having been influenced by what I'm seeing and Okay. Well, hopefully you bring them in, but give it a go. Hopefully I what? Hopefully you utilize the words, but uh, give it a go. Okay. So you want me to literally use the words resilience, follow-up, and communication. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I'm thrilled that you brought up or the system brought up the idea of resilience because um, what I like to teach my friends is how to move and my students as well and my audience members when I'm performing is how to move gracefully through the unknown. Moving gracefully through the unknown requires that you're looking at both, you know, you're not always positive, you're not always negative, you're rolling with what's happening. And because life has many aspects to it, resilience comes into play. Um, we're always negotiating the rocky path, the unknown path. We don't know what's going to happen. And, and just moving through the unknown is a challenge. You know, many people want everything prepared for them. They want a controlled environment. Um, I am pretty good at this moving through the unknown. And I would say that resilience is an incredibly important quality to have. The question is not, is life going to hand you a few things that you're unprepared for? It's going to. The question is really, what are you going to do with that? And even in the last five years, I've used every difficult circumstance to make myself stronger. In fact, I'll take it on and say, I'm going to, this is my strength. This is my stability. Um, so I, I love, you know, there's so much spiritual uh, jargon out there um, that forces us to concentrate on the positive. You know, right now under these circumstances, we need to be having our eyes open at all times and having a sense of grace as we move through. We don't know what's going to be handed to us. And um, personally, I think this is very fertile ground for, to create new things, right? 
So resilience is a great topic, a great topic. Um, continuing to shore that muscle up, bouncing back no matter what. And not only that, but seeing that challenge is um, uh, something that calls us forth to handle it in a different way. So I do things like challenge myself physically. Um, I get into a very cold ocean. I run long distance. Um, and I believe that's my strength. So uh, strength and resilience go hand in hand, moving through the unknown with a positive attitude, uh, important. So I, I hope I teach my friends that. I hope I teach everybody that just in the way that I'm living my life, staying open. No, even if you've been harmed, staying open again. Um, sh should I try to use the word follow-up? Yep. Yeah, I think I sort of explained the follow-up in that in uh, that philosophy of I'm going to use this to make myself stronger. Um, so I'll just read the under part again. When an agreement has been made, a follow-up occurs to make sure it occurs. Yeah, uh, essentially I take on challenges consciously. So that's the follow-up. Uh, knowing that resilience builds strength, I take on challenges, I set them for me. Uh, most recently, very simple challenge. Uh, I get into the ocean uh, on a regular basis. It's 57 degrees, so 30 something degrees colder than my body temperature. Uh, it actually hurts in some ways, but I, I love it. I love doing it. It's not the thing you love while you're doing it. it kind of hurts. It's the thing you're happy to have done. And so the commitment to my own strength and challenging myself has created more, uh, more strength and a commitment to continue to do things that may appear on the outset to not be comfortable, but that have dividends and pay off in terms of sanity, especially. Um, does that how, feel how, how good are you at follow-up conversations? I'm very good. If we set up a plan to follow up, we'll do it. You know, and, and by the way, so I'm a director in the theater. I have to deal with actors, right, all the time. I have to set up rehearsals. If people don't have follow through, I just, I can't, I just have to go. It's to me, it's like if you're an adult, uh, you know, you have a commitment, you make the commitment. And I'm very, I'm 100% on that. And if I have a problem or if something has come up, I'll say, oh, I get, you know, I have to, um, I got to do this or something just came up. I'll, I'll say something, but I really like to abide by the time commitment and the commitments. My time's your time. I respect other people. And yeah, I'm very good at follow up. So, okay, that's great. Um, and in it's respect, you know, it's just common decency really for me. Right. Because that's the main, the main focus of this is the type of conversation. So if you're teaching your friends follow up and you having that type of integrity and then having resilience in regards to it, that, and then in the, in the realm of communication, right? I see. So these are three kind of separate subjects under what should I teach my friends? It's kind well, of a well, the, each. Yeah, each is separate, but each, it, but again, it's a whole as they sort of work together. So it's yeah, it's like any well, yeah, sure. So sure. So it's a game that I've never played before—a divining game. Like you got your three tarot cards there. Yes. The first tarot card is the past. The second is the now, and the third is the future. So, um, it's the the layout is just a little unfamiliar. So I'm just dancing with it. But follow up. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. And with my students, so I'm teaching um, personal narrative in sustainability at Santa Monica College. And um, I'm very clear at the outset, put SMC, the name of the college, put uh, the date and your name in the subject and um, send me the prompts that we're doing in class. So I, admit, I ask for immediate accountability when I teach. As a director, I have to have accountability because I'm I've got a vision, a, you know, dramatic vision. There's a script. People have to kind of agree to convert, just like what you're doing, right? You're, you're casting the table. Greg and I talk about casting, right? Um, you're casting a table and you've got a, a higher purpose to, in my case, to tell a story. Well, I need everyone to commit and be there and then 
to be there the whole length of time. Um, and immediately, you know, I actually at the outset with my actors, I'll say, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't you know, if you're using drugs or you use alcohol, I have to have a certain level of commitment. Um, so I prefer not to work with, with that because my experience over decades has been, you know, those are the people who don't answer phone calls, don't come to rehearsal, et cetera. So because of the, na the nature of theater, there's a tremendous amount of follow-up and responsibility involved. You, you're, you're responsible to a higher um, game, you know, in terms of free space. Here's what I say to my, um, my students, my college students. I say, your participation is your activism. Your participation is your activism. So follow through is everything. Those who follow through with me, who are my students, they get um, correspondence back and forth. They might even get a private session with me and I'll help them figure out their first step towards their activism. So the more you engage, the more rewards you get. So follow up, absolutely. I'm down with that. So, question? And I guess just the, the from everything we're talking about is communication anyway, it's sort of, sort of self-redundant a bit. Sure. Um, but within the larger system, it's the center part of, of the whole organizational structure. Yeah, and there are so many ways to communicate too. You know, I'm very um, visual. So my first degree is in film. It's all about, you know, putting images together with sound and people and personalities. And um, I'm, I'm really into nonverbal communication, even though I'm obviously, you know, I can talk, but um, communication. And that would be a great place for me when we're finished with this to give you my rules of engagement for our paradigm of communication which okay. would coincide with yours. But let's okay. finish your, your game first. Well, that's it pretty much. Um, the next iteration of the screen is, it'll have like uh, the value convo type and conceptual lens and it's a little nicer screen. And then it's, it, it has a start a, a conversation and then you can share it to your social media and then another one is start a caravan where a friend of mine has an app where you can get multiple stories, multiple phones on a, on a timeline on the, on the cloud. And then it stitches it together and outputs it as a file. So it sort of like takes the editing out and adds in a little bit of a intuitive connection. And so it's a way to sort of answer the question, How, you know, there's your, once you get used to it, it's, it's like, it's a different way of sort of putting things together. And then it generates, there's billions of different sort of spells. So it's, yeah, so it's like populating the field and then populating the field again and keeping the conversation going. Yeah. Well, do, do, can you do one of these for me? And, to, and, and, and then you get to do a little bit of a monologue and I get to know you a little bit. Oh, you want me to do one? Okay. Why not? Okay. Well, here, maybe before you do that, I would love for you to do one um, before you, do that. Can I give you my rules of engagement? Okay. Would that, would that be groovy? Yeah. Okay. There, see, mine. You're a kind of a strategist and a system systems guy. I'm kind of a an artistic humanist. <laughs> so, so I would kind of come from that. So my things are. Oops, I just lost a lens in my cheapo glasses. Pause for one moment. But you know, because my background is in the theater, right? And it's all about, it really is about listening. And it's also about understanding subtext. All of theater is built on subtext, right? Um, so I flatter myself to think that I can read subtext really well. Okay, here are my rules of engagement. Okay. Ready, Elijah? Presume the infinite nature of the other. Two, the other has the requisite piece of your puzzle, and you have his or hers. The job is to find it. Uh, recognize, acknowledge, and show gratitude is something I came up with that Greg really loves. And that is 
you know, simply exactly what it is. Whatever is presented to you, you, you recognize and you acknowledge the effort that a person has made to come forward or to say whatever they're saying. And, and you, you know, there's really, thank you is really the only answer to every question, you know, or every problem. Um, so recognize and acknowledge and show gratitude. Uh, if you missed a step, there might be resistance or resentment. If you have judged instead of followed these rules, you may have presumed a superiority, uh, which is a case of mistaken identity, and forfeited the possibility of the first five, presuming the in infinite nature of the other and knowing that the other has, the, has a piece of your puzzle. And that's it, except there's always next time and you can always start again. So it's just kind of a humanist. Essentially, whenever I sit down with someone, I presume their infinite nature and I presume I have something to give them and they have something to give me. Mm. Pretty simple rules of engagement, really. Do, so, you, do you read those rules with everyone you meet like at, at, at the get-go? Oh. No, I'm not. I'm a non. I'm a, a non-controlling communicator. I I, uh, I I look for them. You can tell very quickly whether someone is operating from a base of knowing things already and presuming or projecting. You know very quickly um, if someone is, uh, you know, knows what you're going to say. That means that they're basing the communication that's happening now that has never been had before in something that's happened to them in their past. So yeah. I, I'm, I have a huge practice of talking to strangers. You know, I come right in with no preconceived notions, no judging. If I've made the mistake of judging somebody, I, um, I'm usually pretty delighted if I get it wrong and I'll, you know, make a mental adjustment in myself. You know, I, you, you can, we are infinite. We really are infinite. I, I can't possibly know you from this little rectangle that you're in right now you know, mm. I can only say like what do you what do you got you know what do you got? <laughs> give me some of that elijah <laughs> okay so <clears throat> we'll go again for my part of it, i guess what i'll you, uh what you want i'll go business question all right and uh <laughs> how do we transform inactive customers to active customers I think it's something which uh, most business owners, if they're trying to get a whole bunch of new work and they, you know, to go back to the people that, that they haven't got some work from in a while is, a, is an important thing to learn how to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so synthesis to build parts into holes so they can be understood how it fits into a whole, a research conversation, intelligence to value the capacity for learning, reasoning, understanding, and similar forms of mental activity and health, uh, the overall condition of an organism at a given time. I would say that, um, you know, I think one of the main reference points for any individual or organization is really their own particular health. And these days, especially these days, health is a primary concern. And so to, a synthesis conversation is sort of seeing how you get all the pieces and put it into a whole. And so I, I think that any business or any person who is healthy has synthesized a pretty good system, like their own immune system is working well, and then their outer system is put together well. And I think whenever you put together, uh, you know, use intelligence to put together a system of health, you know, that's if you can help people to do that, if you can have a conversation that helps them to see how to put all their pieces together into a more healthy arrangement, then that could really uh, be effective. You know, and I, and I think that anyone who isn't, let's say, active as a customer and they, they, they've been in your services before, you can always go back to them and add more pieces on, add another, you know, see where they're at, see what they're missing and give them the golden egg as a, as, so to speak. And since I've got so many golden eggs, like, I guess they're throwing golden eggs. Out. <laughs> but I think like, like Midas, I think I'll bring in the Midas and the touch of gold and there's too many eggs. So stop it. We don't want it anymore. <laughs> and yet you have to have that person who's willing to say, hey, you got any golden eggs? Yeah. 
you know, they have to presume your infinite nature. Yeah. And then we'll go hunting in the under the hens for the for the golden eggs. Hopefully, from there we might look other yeah. places. But <laughs> so I just saw the hens like <laughs> you reach under for the golden egg. Go ahead. So why don't you tell me maybe a bit well, about that you? Was your whole, I had such a longer answer. Oh, you did well. Okay, go ahead. Add your part. Oh no 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 no! I meant before. Oh, but I see. I would like to respond to it. Yeah, well, what's your perspective? To, to, uh, so one of the things I've done on the side is advise businesses as to how to have a more holistic approach to their business, a soul-based approach. Mm. So two separate instance, instances, this is, this is what I did. I, I, lo I love the word synthesis and I love the word health uh, because the health of a, an organization, the, even the health of a corporation, right? That's a real thing. So if you have staff that are perpetrating, no, if you have administration perpetrating on the staff, some sort of thing that ends up making the staff feel lower than administration or not used, or if you have an in-house population that's unhappy, then you're missing the health, you're missing looking at the health of the organism and you're missing looking at the synthesis, like you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. So each time with these two, it was schools. It was one was the uh, writer's boot camp, which is a screenwriting school. And the other one was uh, the West Side Waldorf School, which is a series of schools based on Steiner. Do you know Rudolf Steiner? Yeah, yeah. So each time I went in, I proposed as a member of the administration, a way of how to make all the in-house populations happy. It's a humanitarian question because it's like, if there's unrest in any part of a corporation or let's just say a school in this instance, you've got, in the school you've got administration, you've got teachers, you've got children and you've got parents. And sometimes like, they don't jive, you know. The teachers have a whole body of knowledge from which they operate and from which they teach. The administrators may not have gone through the same schooling as the teachers, so they would not necessarily have embraced Steiner's principles. The children are learning and the parents know enough to think, gosh, I think I want my kids to kind of come up through this but I am not familiar with all the teachings, right? So you have different levels of knowing, but ultimately everybody wants the same thing. They wanna be part of a thriving community. They want their children to be safe and learn and have fun. They want the teachers to be happy. Everybody kind of wants the same thing. And so with the Waldorf school, ultimately my job was to get more enrollees, you know, and the way that I did it was to create these outreach projects and to figure out what all the parents do. Like, what is the individual gift that people bring? Even in a corporation, you could do this. You might have someone who's extremely able to do what you're doing, like create systems. You might have, I don't, I don't know, somebody else who just cares about the aesthetic of, of, the, uh, of the room when you walk in right? But everybody has different gifts. And really what, they, what they're desperate to do, everyone is desperate to do is use their, their they want to use their gifts. So I start this huge volunteer, uh, I ended up working with like 300 people to create a show, right? It's, everything's theater to me. So, um, and, and then I would bring in panels of people to talk about the things that the both the parents and teachers were interested in, which kind of leveled the playing field because if the teachers were interested in people who had something to say and the parents were interested, that put them both at a place of they don't know. So they wanted to, so everyone showed up on equal footing. And this created eventually more to offer the community, a happier community, and it translated into 25 new enrollees in three months. Okay, so the idea of kind of looking at the organism as a whole is the way to heal a lot of things, right? Put the soul back into the corporation. Um, and all you're really doing is saying, what do you wanna do? Let me help you do it. And then boom, the thing expands, right? Um, 
And then I'll just add on the thing that I did with Writer's Boot Camp. It's a screenwriting school. You, if you just sit and you write your screenplay and it's tools and you're sitting and you're alone and you're isolated, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Being a writer is difficult, right? You have to have people to bounce things off. Of. So I, I created this thing called Scene Circus. And we took three pages of script of the writers or 10 pages of script, depending on how good the script was. I'd work with the writers to excise everything that wasn't translatable to performance. And then I, I did this on two coasts, New York and California. I worked with 70 writers on both coasts and I uh, cast those three pages or 10 pages. Sometimes we would even do like a 20 page read of the, the middle of the script. And we, we made an animated first reading of that part of the script. Now the writers got to see their work come to life which is totally different than whacking it out and doing your two hours a day, uh, five days a week. And that too translated to, this is what we're doing, or, oh, I have my work read, or blah, blah, blah. And then uh, community gatherings where all the writers came out and they got to meet actors and they formed some alliances and the actors got to be used because even though I didn't pay them, I mean, I had another workforce of like 300 people, everybody working for me wanted to write. They wanted it to amount to something. And basically I just made the in-house population happier, which does exactly what you're talking about. You're looking at the uh, synthesis, the health, and I forgot the other one. But anyway, we need a role, we need a model for, and I'm sure you have it, for the corporations, I mean, I'm not, this is not an original thought, to come back into alliance with nature, to come back into alliance with their own souls on an individual basis. So, but I'm not a business person, by the way. I'm not a business person, but I can go into businesses and make them better by adding this element of the soul in communication, right? So I like that question. You're, I think you're muted. Yeah, and that was a, I see you faces there. a brilliant answer is on both accounts. So it's, it's see how it, gen, it's supposed, it generates, right? You've got all that wisdom and knowledge and it sort of sets a question and sets a set of parameters. And then it, you know, it, you would answer and then it kind of goes out to whoever you're with and everyone gives a perspective. And by the end of it, you got something that's very, very sort of powerful. And the thing that I love about what you're doing, Elijah, is I know this deeply. And my phrase is ride the question mark. Mm. Everything real comes from a question. It, it, when, when you ask a question, again, it's a, it's a great leveling of the playing field, right? It's, you're, when you ask a question, you're saying, I don't know, <laughs> which is a humble place to start. And that means two people don't know. And then you feel your way to it. And I love that thing behind you, by the way. That's gorgeous. This is the time translator. And it's like, of all the tools that I've designed, this is the foundation for the whole sort of thinking system. So this is a, a, a cyclical view to time. And you've got your lifetime in the purple and the zodiac. You got yeah. 13 moons. You got one moon, one day. And then in the middle, you've got seasons that are sort of like a switch point with the, and then a, a switch point also with the Mayan calendar coming in. And then you have hours in the pink and minutes in the orange, red is present moment. And then in the center, Magneta, where you see the beam of light is timelessness. And there we're bringing in levels of consciousness. So we're bringing together cycles of time and levels of consciousness. So it, if you, if you go sort of beyond the present moment into, you know, higher states of consciousness, you know, the mind is still given a model for that. So it's gorgeous. And, and I want that. What do you call the, the white beam? That's the levels of consciousness or the timelessness. Yeah. And I see that actually as a sweeping second hand that should move all continually. Uh -huh. Right. Because that's the reminder that consciousness is the gift. Consciousness is the gift. We don't have consciousness. We don't have anything. Right. You know? um, consciousness is it just it's like the hand clapping that that he uttered that hears itself. Right. It's consciousness is the thing that hears the tree fall in the woods. And I, I love that. 
I think we should make it a clock as one of our products and it should have a white sweeping hand. Uh, very nice. <laughs> free of charge. There you go. But you know, in terms of free space, um, Greg's clock is one of my favorite things on the planet. Mm. The now clock is one of my favorite things, you know, and that would be a gorgeous uh, clock face with a sweeping white second hand. Well, adaptions happen all the time. So in Greg's game, we've been speaking and he was going like in the middle of May, perhaps giving me the first move in the game. And then I was thinking this, or perhaps what I showed you before was the first move because there's so many kind of, I don't know what's for me, the foundation of, of how to sort of move into what I have. Cause like what I have is like a portal. So that first move is like a portal and every move is a portal, but then yeah. the first move can affect everything else coming in after it because it gives perhaps place to it. But I don't know, we're still in the middle of, uh, he seems to know a lot more, of course, of how it'll go. And I'm, I've got my own, my own stuff. Yeah. But, well, what's beautiful about this, and I really see it happening, because I, you know, I'm sure we've all seen it happening in the last 20, 30 years, these movements of higher, uh, you know, desire to, to change who we are, you know, as humans, change the trajectory by following the higher trail of ourselves, right? I really see this, these, these uh, phalanxes falling into, uh, I mean, you'd have to be really egotistical to think you're the only one, you know, we had to guard against this as we, as we were creating free space. We knew we weren't the only ones. We weren't, you know, at the top of the phalanx. Others were joining. So I see all these joining, 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 and it's this whole urge from the, you know, soul of humanity, like we, are tired of hating ourselves you know we just would like to like ourselves better <laughs> and i think that's enough of a motivation in a way it's like we've done this for 2000 3000 4000 years um built everything on the paradigm of debate and war and one upsmanship and you know going at each other and to me the question is is one of the most important ways in art is one of the most important ways in and what we need to do always as we're moving ourselves forward is allow for the other phalanxes to join. And it's, it's got to be a beautiful thing. Um, so so what, what occurred to me immediately when you were talking was the Buckminster Fuller question. That you're, what you've got is a game, right? It's, it starts somewhere. It populates its own fields exponentially. It adds more people, more information, more ideas. And that reminds me about the Buckminster Fuller question, which the throwdown was, do you know that quote? Do you know that famous quote by, by Buckminster Fuller? That we have to build a whole new system or? It's, it's to make the world work for 100% of the people. I, you know, I really should memorize it. I am a freaking actress. Here it is. To make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time through spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or the disadvantage of anyone. Mm -hmm. And basically what that quote was coupled with was uh, a challenge to create the world game. That's what he called it, the world game. So the Buckminster Fuller like society, whatever they are, they, they put out this challenge to, to do the game, to do, create a world game. And that's what you've created. You've created a world game uh, and we've created a world game. And so there's no reason why spontaneous games cannot be played, <laughs> you know? Um, and it would be really cool to have places in the game built in where, you, where there are bridges created to the other games, mm -hmm. right? Um, oh, I've, so I feel like that might be what's coming to be as, you know, not to mention that you have a team that would help, would serve us because me as like humanitarian artist and Greg as, you know, basically a tsunami of ideas that he has easy access to repeat, brilliant articulation, and it's all ready to go. But what we need is a unit production manager. In, in, in cinematic terms, it would be 
the person who puts the budget together and the schedule together to make the film, you know, or the TV series. And um, it seems like your team, from what Greg has said, is kind of kind of like a unit production management team. I could be. I mean, uh, that sounds. Again, it could be. I mean, in the last meeting, I was because because there's a lot of different ways that I can let's say facilitate a group or a team. And what mm -hmm. I found in the past is you can bring a lot of creators together, but each has their own vision. And if you don't take into account their vision and what they want to do, they'll either hijack it or kind of leave it at some point. Right. And, so, and what I have are tools to help visionaries create things, an operating system to help people create things. But then I need help to get all these tools together. Yeah. So at the beginning, it was more like the invitation was there because this product is here and, and, and I've got uh, a connection that's happening next year well this year uh, with a group that's that's helping bring my work into the world through being a piece of the program they're doing some at the design level with Lucille Foundation which is a, a beautiful organization and so I'm about to bring all this into the world because nobody's really seen I haven't ever really taken it out into the world yet I've just been doing R&D and testing and sort of not really wanting to partic participate much with the rest of humanity, if I was honest. And now it seems like things have caught up. You know, the world situation is such that, you know, I think there'd be a number of people open to some new kind of system, right? And, you know, the, the world has stopped. And, and, I, and I think there's a real reason for that. And, and it may be, of course, because certain groups of, of people have oppressive designs, in my opinion, but there's also that the world could not continue in the way that it was. And now a new story needs to open up and, and a new, and so I see what Greg is doing, you know, is, is a, a portal into this new way. And I think what I've been working on is a bit of a portal into the new way. And, and now here we're talking and Greg had said, you know, you're like, there's all these people orbiting, right? And everyone's looking around and people are always, you know, curious people check things out. And if you see something that's maybe new, maybe different, then you pay attention. And I think that's both you and Greg, you know, seem to be pioneers. And so. And you, I mean, if we're talking about pioneers, I mean, you, I, I totally understand everything you're saying and I'm in agreement and, and, uh, I remember working with, I've worked with a lot of channeled uh, higher consciousness teachers. And I remember this incredible conversation I had with uh, some of them about wait, uh, waiting, the power of waiting and what happens kind of in the waiting room, you know? Mm. And um, I totally understand like moving away from the world and working on your stuff. Um, Oh, I hope I didn't cut you off. Did I cut you off? I wanted to just respond because I love what you were saying. Um, it, one of the things that, you know, I had, so I have a, this acting school and I use all these tools everywhere, whatever I'm doing, right? And it's um, the inner landscape is the new frontier. Mm -hmm. And if you think about how little we are asked to, helped to, reminded to, know that this whole thing is a world you know that's that's why my communication you know system is based on the idea that we're infinite hey we kind of forgot that i mean we are a fingernail clipping of what we perceive each other to be mm -hmm. and the extent to which we can more fully engage and be intimate and know each other and learn from each other i feel like is that fingernail clipping tip we could all be so much more to each other, yeah. but we've been kind of uh, sold this bill of, uh, you know, everything, the bill of relationships. It's going to look like that you're going to have a romance or a friendship or a, a parent or a, you, there's what? There's so many profound possibilities for us to connect. Um, in the animal world, I feel like we've, we've missed, some people haven't, but have missed opportunities to communicate very deeply. We know that when we populate drought infested 
um, ecosystems with certain animals, they will come back, they'll thrive. And this is a way that animals have of communicating with us. That, that, like everything that we need to make this step from the tra downward trajectory of destruction into, you know, it's that interruptus thing. It's like that coitus interruptus thing. Are we gonna birth a monster? Or are we gonna birth something that we really all are starving for? We're starved for this. And I just think even this conversation is so lovely because we did presume that we don't know each other, we, that we are infinite. And it's such a different way to communicate, you know? And it's, it fills the soul, it fulfills the soul. And when the soul gets fed, it grows. And it grows from this, like, you know, uh, this shriveled thing in the corner of a cell in the dark, you know, and it, it starts to, you know, come out. And that's, in my mind, where humanity is. I, I see humanity at the margins of the dark ages. Hmm. When I, I live in a city, right, I live in L.A., I've lived in three cities, London, L.A., and New York, and when I go down the street in L.A., and I see these, I've never seen homelessness worse than right now, right? And I think, I take it personally. I feel like we are in the dark ages because we are making people who can't take care of themselves camp in a part of a tent in a dirty, under a dirty bridge. And I feel like that's the indicator, of all of these things, homelessness, um, starvation, refugeeism. I mean, obviously we are not taking care of each other. And I don't think we really like ourselves because of that. I, I think we would like to be, um, I think we would like to be heroes, not, you know, villains, because <laughs> that's simple. And this is what we, this is our cosmic timeout. We've been sent to our rooms and now we have no choice but to go, okay, what do I got here? What do I got here? And it's painful, right? To, but failing being able to look at the self, you can at least look at what you'd like to build. And this is the time where people are holding up and figuring out if they wanna build something, what they wanna build, what it looks like. But ultimately we're gonna to have to face off um, and figure out like what, what this is. And um, I'll, I'll just close by saying one of the best things I've done in the last few years is I, I went to Pacifica Graduate Institute in uh, Santa Barbara. It's a Jungian based institute. And I took a year and a half memoir writing course. And all of the tools are based on Jung, right? And Jung, if you've ever seen the Red Book, have you ever seen the Red Book? You would love that, Elijah. The Red Book, it's like a 150 buck book. It's about this, this big, you know, it's giant. And it's really about Jung's exploration of his inner self, the imagination, dreams, um, all these kind of rabbit holes within the self that lead to a greater understanding of who we are, what we are, and really point only to one thing, our infinite nature, and that we know much more and have access to much more than we're even glomming onto. And um, so the best thing I did was like, begin to take seriously, I mean, I'm a creator, right? So the imagination, the imagination and start to poke around at where, what we accept, we're, we, we're storytellers, but we accept this very by rote kind of um, forms of story. And so I'm poking around to try to figure out where, where the end of imagination is. And I know unequivocally that I'm using like this much of it rather than that much, not much is available to me. So we're really, I feel at the beginning of our um, evolution, humanity, we're just starting to go, what? Did someone say something? <laughs> you know, did you say something? Um, so yeah, I really believe this time is a gift and I try to focus not on the nefarious forces so much because that's an endless task, you know, because you have to put all your energy into creating Otherwise, you know, you, you create and that nefarious force. I mean, I'm a woman. Nobody listens to me. I'm a woman over 50. Are you fucking kidding me? It's just like, shut the fuck up, you know, and you're not even beautiful. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh man, am I ever going to be heard? I don't know. But the, this time is a place where, where the new voices are emerging, you know, 
Yeah. Um, so anyway, monologue number five. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, no, and I, I think you're capturing the essence of what so many artists are feeling and, and let's say women your age or anything. Like I think all of us in some way don't feel heard. And yeah, absolutely. I, and I think part of that is is we're the numbers, let's say in Facebook, or these numbers give a false impression that people are listening. And I, to me, I, I cut down the amount of people who are, let's say, on my social media, because I'd rather have a few that I'm actually connected with. And I don't feel it's still on Facebook, then, but that's where I'm aiming. I'm aiming at being in a community of people where on my stream, I know who they are. I know the relevance of the post. They know who I am. And it's a different type of software program. Like the, I think one of the greatest limitations we have is the type of software we're using. And as soon as we have a, a software more designed by us, used by us, and really a holistic software system that we don't have to spend forever trying to figure out how everything works anymore. It's just like, here you go. Here, here's a way to make a link. Here's, here's how it all connects together. And, it's, and you've got the conceptual framework in your mind you got it in maps and then you got it in software and, and all three align. And I think that's what's missing is there's this massive confusion because we don't have a central reference point that actually aligns with reality. It doesn't, you know, it's not aligning with natural law. It's just aligning with, you know, a thousand years of business interests that have created well, these. I was just going to say the central focus is to sell. I mean, that's, it's because we do have a central focus. It's just a misidentified focus. Right, it's just um, sell, 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 buy, 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 sell, 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 buy, buy, buy. That all has to be bypassed, and uh, we got to. Yeah. But until save. we figure out how to make, I think, a living with our gifts in a good way, um, I like. I just think that when someone has found their right place, they stop competing. But if you have no framework to actually understand where your right place is. You're always drifting in this morass of BS that is sort of like what I would call the old paradigm, right? So we really have it's to build. So hard. Yeah, it's so hard to not buy into what we've bought. It's it's very hard to buy out. It's, mm. It takes a tremendous amount of courage. Um, but I do think that's what's happening now. I really do. We're we're breaking it. We're breaking the paradigm. We have to. I mean, it's it's. It's breaking, you know, something's pushing so hard on you. At some point, you get out of the way and let it break through the other side. And, and yeah. Do we it. have to let, let it be broken. You know, it, it it's breaking itself. Um, my, my biggest worry is how much damage will be done as it breaks to the to the natural world. Yeah. You know, that's the worry. Well, I have to go. Um, I agree. This went hugely quick. That was a, a very fast hour. <laughs> and, uh, great to finally meet you and to uh, see the depth and breadth of your knowledge and wisdom and, and your work and who you are and uh, thanks and you too I look forward to seeing what, what's going to happen in the future yeah oh yeah we'll we'll figure out what the next step is I guess right and um, a pleasure all right great to meet you au revoir mon amour <laughs>